November 4, 1901, the Spokesman Review, Spokane, Washington. The Toppin Poisoning Case. A sensational trial is promised in Massachusetts. Boston, November 3rd. When we have told all we know to support the charge we have made against Jane Toppin, the Robinson Poisoning Case, hitherto the most famous that has ever been heard in a Massachusetts court, will sink into insignificance. This statement, the Herald will say tomorrow, was made by John Whitney of the police force, who reached his home Sunday. The Herald will say further, Miss Toppin probably would not have been arrested when she was, had not District Attorney Holmes and Officer Whitney feared she might commit suicide. Officer Whitney remembered that a short time before Miss Toppin had made two attempts to end her life. A long time before she was arrested, the police had been trying to confirm a suspicion they had that a patient she had nursed in Lowell had died from poisoning. In January 1900, Dr. Herbert B. McIntyre of Cambridge was satisfied that a patient of his, Mrs. Myra S. Connors, who was nursed by Miss Toppin, died under suspicious circumstances. June 24, 1902, Daily True American, Trenton, New Jersey. Nurse Toppin sent to asylum for life. Admitted poisoning patient. Alienists testified to woman's suicidal mania and court directed verdict. Her father, a lunatic. By Publishers Press Least Wire. Bonstable, Massachusetts, June 23rd. That Miss Jane Toppin, the trained nurse accused of triple murder, will spend the remainder of her life in an insane asylum was the decree of the special session of the Superior Court held here today, the jury being instructed by the court to bring in such a verdict. The trial, which promised to last all day at least, was suddenly brought to a close at a late hour this afternoon. Following druggists Waters of Warham and Robinson of Falmouth, both of whom sold morphine to the prisoner, O. A. Brigham of Lowell took the stand. His evidence related to a visit Miss Toppin made at his home and was material only in so much as that it was while the prisoner was his guest that she attempted suicide. Dr. Lathrop of Lowell testified to treating Miss Toppin while a guest at Mr. Brigham's. To him, she admitted that she wanted to die. Dr. Stedman, alienist, was an important witness. He told in detail of his visits to the jail in company with doctors Jelly and Quinby, the latter of the Worcester Insane Asylum. To Dr. Stedman, Miss Toppin admitted that she had given poison to Mrs. Gibbs. This admission was made on April 5th last. The prisoner told this voluntarily. The poisons were morphine and atrophine. The poison, she said, was administered in pill form. One quarter grain each of morphine, one sixtieth grain of atrophine. Prisoner did not know how much she gave, but she gave over a dose of the pills at least twice. The doses of poison were administered by the rectum in a solution of whiskey and water. The prisoner did not show the least emotion when the edict of court was being announced. She had learned from her counsel what to expect, and she was prepared for it. The day's proceedings had the effect of making her nervous, and she expressed great relief when the trial was over and she was taken away to jail. The verdict of the court met the universal satisfaction in the county. Jane Toppin's family history reveals the fact that her father, Kelly the Crack, is in an insane asylum. She was born Nora Kelly, but was adopted out of an institution. Another sister, adopted from the same institution, has never been heard from. A third sister, after spending thousands of dollars searching for Nora, finally found her in the Massachusetts General Hospital as a nurse. Since Jane's trouble, this sister has dropped completely from sight. A fourth sister is in a Massachusetts Institute for the Insane. June 26, 1902, The Daily Star, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Confessed 31 murders. Jane Toppin, wholesale poisoner, makes a statement. 
declares she is not insane, says she could not help committing the crimes, and that there would have been many more victims had she not been arrested. Boston, June 25th. Jane Toppin, who was sent to the Taunton Insane Asylum by a jury at Barnstable Monday, where she was tried for the murder of Mrs. Mary D. Gibbs, has made a confession to her senior counsel, Judge Fred M. Bixby, that during her career as a professional nurse, she killed no less than 31 human beings. Judge Bixby said that Miss Toppin had admitted that she had set fires and committed other serious acts. She said she could not help committing the crimes. She argued, moreover, that she was not insane. She said she knew she was doing wrong when she administered poison to her victims, and she asked Judge Bixby how, under the circumstances, she could be of unsound mind. Morphine was Miss Toppin's agency for producing death. Many of her victims were unsuspecting and most intimate friends. Others were the patients of reputable physicians who employed her on account of her ability as a nurse. Miss Toppin was so expert in her knowledge of how to employ drugs and poisons that she was able to escape detection for years. In the detailed story as told to Judge Bixby by Miss Toppin, she did not enumerate her many victims although she did admit the killing of Mrs. Gibbs, Mrs. Harry Gordon of Chicago, and Alden P. Davis, all of whom died at Catamet last summer. Miss Toppin murdered to gratify a passion. She was responsible for numerous fires in houses in which she was a nurse, and had she remained at liberty, she admits that many more people would have died and many more incendiary fires would have occurred. Jane Toppin's crimes were revolting beyond all description, but the details perhaps will never be known, for the lips of her counsel are sealed. Her confession was not made as a story of wholesale murder, but has been drawn out little by little, from time to time. When counsel have talked with her in Barnstable Jail, she said her impulses irresistibly compelled her to murder her patients in order that she might enjoy the sight of their struggles. She told how she killed each, saying she used morphine and atrophine mixed in mineral water and whiskey. In the presence of death, she would gleefully fondle the patient, stare into the eyes, as if it were to see the inner workings of the soul, do all possible to intensify the agony of the patients, and when the end came, she would become herself again. Alienists say that Jane Toppin embodied the worst types of degeneracy, and with this clear, there was no doubt of her mental condition. While murder was Jane Toppin's greatest crime, there were many lesser forms of mental depravity, each in themselves deplorable. She told of setting fires in homes in which she was a nurse or visitor, and intimate acquaintances tell of peculations of money and jewelry. Judge Bixby and the experts doubt the accuracy of portions of Miss Toppin's confession, but it is doubtful if they can find evidence that will ever disprove or substantiate it. No matter what the doctors say, Miss Toppin has stated that she killed those 31 people, and despite a reputation she has for being untruthful, this statement will doubtless have to be accepted as true. <laughs>